What's goody warriors? We're in there. You ready to do this Finn? Because I definitely am. We're talking about the Evil Within, the assignment, the DLC. I'm reviewing this, I'm not going to say any spoilers. I'm just going to go in and talk about the game, talk about the system, talk about the introduction of characters, story, and what is the assignment Evil Within DLC about. I finished the Evil Within DLC, I finished it last night. I'm going to do my review. I've got three hours, let me do this thing because I need to put out more content and I want to just keep on doing more stuff. If you want nice things, you got to keep making nice things. Thank you once again. Adding me on Twitter. And share my video on Facebook. Links. Everything like that. I'm so appreciative. This is what keeps us going. And you know. Because we're all together on this one. You know what I mean? One warrior. One nation. Let's do this thing. Evil Within. The assignment. DLC. What I loved about this DLC is because you deal with Kidman and Mobius. Who is Kidman? Who is Mobius? What is Mobius? What is Stem? Who is and what is Ruvik? Who are all these characters? Leslie. Who are they? This DLC explains a lot. It doesn't explain everything, but it does so much creative digging into the mythology of the evil within. The, this DLC has single-handed filling in the gaps in the story mode and adding a layer of depth that I really didn't see was there. I could say the evil thing has actually got a mythology now. It's got a lore. I don't like how horror games have no weapons, right? Not a fan of those type of games. The evil thing has no weapons. You have a flashlight. That's all you have as your weapon. Don't have any guns. You don't have any bombs. You have. You do get to sneak kill like five enemies in the entire game. And this is why I'm going to talk about the aspect of system. You did stealth kill on certain situations scenario based enemies where you're in a situation where you have axes where you can pick up an axe and if you creep up against an enemy you can just axe kill them and axe kill look pretty satisfying my eye. but other than that you don't do sneak kills it's not about fighting enemies it's all about getting rounded enemies because there's situations where you have to go around cover and you have to call to the zombies or the undead or the haunted whatever you want to call them and once they come round you have to move because they will run directly to where you called out from then that's your point to walk around them and then exit the area so it's not about interacting with the enemies it's about escaping and surviving now the way this game did it was absolutely amazing they used situations where there's certain areas and certain puzzles that you needed to find the keys or the situation or the clues to solving a puzzle or opening an area or a door or anything by um, shining your flashlight on it and then something will happen where the reality distorts and then you can open the door or you solve the puzzle like there'll be a puzzle and you don't have to solve the puzzle but if you uh, flash the flashlight sorry about that and if you flash the flashlight around the room you'll find the clue and it shows you distinctly how to do it so they use the for torchlight but they used it very creatively and it's, it felt like more than just a flashlight it felt like a weapon like they knew it said the pen is mightier than the sword this is what this felt like it felt like the pen was mightier than the sword you never felt fear of death not once did I fear in fear of death because the game kind of shows you one thing I mean it does help me that I've finished Akuma mode 31 times in the Evil Within I love that this game I play this game all the time but what I did find about the Evil Within was if you use your mind and you take your time and you're very aware you're never gonna die you are never going to die if you don't rush into an enemy into a trap into a situation where you're just going to die look around the area observe the situation never walk into a room you don't know how to walk back out of this game gives you more than adequate various options how to deal with any given situation zombie undead or the haunted to deal with any of them it gives you more than enough options if you want to call you can call if you want to show yourself then run around then hide then go around you can if you want to press the phone there's certain phones in areas where you can press it and the enemies will go to it, it gives you plenty enough time to run out of the area and then lock them in a room or lock them in a cabinet or you can run into an area run into a, um, a locker there's so many different various options to escape enemies and not interact with them but you have to be used to these type of games and play the evil within properly not just go through the game like a neanderthal and just dying a hundred times just so you can get to the next checkpoint that's not what this game is about these type of games is about understanding the game and knowing the environment understanding that you have to observe the situation know what the game is about and how to use literally the time 
tiniest little tool and make it into a mighty sword. That's what this Evil Within DLC is about. They also uncover the story of Stem. Who is Ruvik? What is Ruvik? What is... Why were we in the mind of what seemed to be Ruvik? We weren't actually in his mind. That's all I'm going to say if you haven't played the game. But this game does a lot of digging into the mythology of the Evil Within. I get it now. I understand Leslie. I understand Sebastian. I understand the whole Kidman, Mobius, the stem. Why were we, did it look like we were in Ruvik's head? It's absolutely incredible, the digging. We find out about Kidman's backstory, which is absolutely amazing. The way you have um, tapes, so you can look at information and learn a lot of information about her story. And she's got like a proper sad backstory. You know, it makes me like the character even more. And I didn't feel anything for the character until I started to understand her backstory. This DLC was absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, do I enjoy... the Okay, the moment before I start playing The Evil Within, do I enjoy it? No, I don't. Because I know The Evil Within is going to be stressful. And it's going to give me out-of-body experiences and a heart attack. I know that for certain. And I hate that the game is so godlike that you can't help keep playing. The Evil Within has showed me one thing. I actually have problems with my nerves because I'm playing that game and I'm always so on edge I'm on tilt when I'm playing that game but I love it I love it this game wasn't as scary as the main game but it's unnerving and it's still very unsettling the reason it wasn't scary is because this DLC was extremely story based it was fantastic from beginning to end there was puzzles every puzzle related to story every single area related to story you felt like you were dragged and pulled in to the evil within it grabbed you by the scruff of your neck from the very beginning and it didn't let you go until the end of the dlc and the dlc is about i mean i finished it in about boom good isn't it I finished it in 4 hours, 40 minutes, 4 hours, 40 minutes with 0 deaths. It didn't feel, if 4 hours is short, it didn't feel it. It felt like more than just DLC, you know, because it was so satisfying. Yeah, and to a certain degree, you want it to be over with. Because it drained so much mental energy playing it because it's so unnerving and unsettling. And, at t and yeah, I mean, it is scary at times because you don't know what's going to happen you know but other than that absolutely brilliant story based dlc this is a masterclass in how to pull people into a horror game with deep story even though you have no weapons and make you you will not notice it's four hours it feels much much longer than four hours in terms of there wasn't many enemies in the area but you had to know how to deal with the enemies that were in that area I personally would give this DLC a 9 out of 10. Absolutely 9 out of 10. Even though it didn't have any weapons. The way it utilised the tiny little tools that they did give you. And turned the tiny little tools into a mighty weapon. Within the restraints and the construction of the world. Was absolute genius. Once again, Tango, Bethesda. Absolutely brilliant work. Love you guys. So yeah, I hope this um, review helped. I didn't do reveal any Bodori spoilers or anything like that. So I would recommend you go check this game out. Have a wonderful day, man. Enjoy the weekend and the week and just live fabulously. Okay, Warriors, take care.